Hello and welcome to CFSS TV. I'm Ron Weber here with Mohammed Fahim and Bob Johnson. Our topic today is on the activity level that you should have to find a job. Mohammed, what should we be doing to find a job as far as the number of interviews and things like that? Good question, Ron. Uh, first off, please understand that in our process that we recommend and that, that we teach, mm -hmm. If you implement that process, folks, I'll guarantee you that you'll have a job in 90 days or less. And I mean, I'm saying that on camera. Bob, you were asking me the other day, how can you guarantee right, that? Right, right. Yeah, if you do things right, remember there are like over 5.3 million job openings out there. Wow. And uh, job search now is a process. What I do is, in our job search uh, segment also, we spoke a little bit about this. I talk about the importance of, uh, you know, looking for a job is a full-time job. And how do you define a full-time job? Monday through Friday, eight hours a day. Now, you can either work hard or you can work smart. And what we recommend is the 54321 process. Okay. And what is the 54321 process? Okay, let's start off with number five first. Okay. Especially if you're collecting unemployment in the state of Illinois or anywhere else for that matter, they will ask you to come in and bring proof of your job search activity. Okay, so you need to be prepared for that. You need to have at least one targeted resume a day. So in five days, that makes it five. So that is the five of the five, four, three, two, one process. One targeted resume. What is a targeted resume? Okay, again, a targeted resume is targeted to the job that you're applying for. Starts off with identifying what your skills are, what your transferable skills are, what are the required skills in today's market by the employer, how can you take your skills and transfer them to what the employer is asking, and uh, so you need to have a really, really good understanding of the job that you have applied for. Okay and not just take a resume like you used to do before and tweak it and send it out. That thing is not going to work. Right. You have got to have a good understanding of the job and write a targeted. And that's where I come in with my recommendations that please don't use a, uh, you know, a professional resume writer. How can you go to somebody every single day and ask them to rewrite a resume for you? You know how much that's going to cost you? <laughs> okay. Right. So understand the job. Make sure that you are writing to the need of the employer. It's like selling a product now. Okay, you are going to be marketing a product. Like, let's say that, Ron, I mean, I, uh, I have a pen, and I try to sell you a pen. Mm -hmm. And I may have the best pen in the market, but if I have not done the research mm -hmm. to know whether you require a pen or not, and I come to you and I say, here is the pen, Mr. Weber, and this is the best pen in the world. It will write forever. The pen, the ink never dries. Oh, you can go back and you can rub it over. And you look at me and go, Mohammed, hang on a second. The last time I used a pen was three years back. Right. Uh, you know, yes. I'm using a stylus now on a computer. Mm -hmm. And I go, oops, <laughs> what have I done? So finding out the need of the employer, extremely essential and answering that need in a targeted resume. So that's my definition of a targeted resume. Okay. So what's number uh, four then? Well, number four is again, we talk about how you need to get out of the house. You cannot sit in front of a computer all day and look for work, okay? That is not going to work out for you. So you need to have four connecting activities every mm -hmm. week. And what's a connecting activity mean? I, I've heard networking. What's a connecting okay. activity? I'm, I'm so glad you're bringing these things up, guys. Again, if you have been to any of our seminars, you're welcome to attend the seminars. The seminars are free. Information uh, is always posted on our website, www.cfss.us. See when the next seminar is going to be. We might be doing some webinars also. So. We don't use the word networking in our seminars. I dropped that mm -hmm. a long time back, I think about four years back. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, networking is for computers. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you look at the definition of networking, somehow that got translated into, oh, you need to network with people. You need to network mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. 
I'm so sorry, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you can network all you want, but if you don't connect with somebody, mm. nothing is going to happen. Mm. So, yeah, what, what do you mean, connect? with well, somebody what what's that mean you really have to get to know them on a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. basis you mm -hmm. need to set up important uh, i mean meetings with them you need to go meet with them get have to coffee meet. with them and have coffee with them mm -hmm. uh, uh, connect in different ways uh, through social media also mm -hmm. you know start a dialogue with them just don't be uh, you know oh i got a uh, you know a linkedin account yeah so what mm -hmm. am i supposed to come and look at your linkedin account every single day not really, okay? You right. have to be mm -hmm. actively using the resources that are out there. Mm -hmm. So connecting is extremely important. Well, you can connect with people in a number of ways, okay? You can go to job fairs, you can go to alumni associations, you can go to, you know, the state employment offices. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have a lot of, uh, especially in the Chicago area, greater Chicago land area, we are very lucky to live in a neighborhood where there are all kinds of industry expos and things happen. Mm -hmm. Go meet people. Mm -hmm. And that is where you need to start this entire process of four connecting activities. Mm. Okay. Chamber of Commerce in your neighborhood, okay, every neighborhood, every city, every village has a Chamber of Commerce. You don't have to be a member to go attend a meeting. Meetings are usually in the mornings, before hours, mm -hmm. you know, after office hours. You can go as a guest. The biggest thing that most people are doing is they are hanging around people who do not have a job. Mm. My biggest beef, guys. These so-called, uh, you know, networking groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to be successful, Bob, who do you hang out with? People who are working. Who are successful, right? Right, who are successful. I mean, if you go and sit, uh, you know, on a sidewalk with three bums with, you know, brown paper bags with a bottle in their hands, and you go and meet them regularly, what do you think is going to happen in a couple of weeks? You're going to be the fourth bum, right? <laughs> right. Absolutely. And, and some of these places are actually charging for memberships of the bums club. Okay. I'm so sorry, folks, but please understand. Be around people who have a job mm -hmm. or who can help you land something mm, okay now if you are hanging around with jobless people if they see an opportunity i'm so sorry i mean they make it sound like oh we are going to share job leads with you mm -hmm. oh yeah sure they never do yeah because you know? i mean why would i want you competing with the job that i'm going to go that's right for, that's right. right yeah so for connecting activities must get out of the house don't stay behind that computer all day mm. trying to look for a job so that brings us to number three. What is number three? Well, number three is off of every connecting activity that you do, try to sit down with somebody on a face-to-face -face basis. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say that you go to a Chamber of Commerce meeting. Okay. And uh, we strongly recommend that you have business cards printed, even if you don't have a job. That doesn't mean that you don't have any value, okay? Mm -hmm. You are an accountant, you are going to be an accountant. You may be called by a different name right. in your next job, right? You could be an accounting manager or mm -hmm. a, you know, a business analyst or whatever, right? But you're still, trade-wise, you are an accountant, an right. engineer, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Bring a stack of business cards with you. Exchange business cards with the people that you meet. And after you have exchanged business cards, reach out to them and ask them for a one-on-one -on -one informational interview. So I might say, hey, Bob, I met you in mm -hmm. the chamber this morning. Right. I would really like to learn more about you and your company. Do you have a few minutes that I can come out and visit with you? Mm -hmm. Don't go around asking for jobs in those meetings. There are people out there who are being taught this thing wrong, and I'm so sorry, I have to address this. Mm -hmm. They say when you go to this Chamber of Commerce meeting or whatever, you should have your elevator speech ready. Okay, and what should be my elevator speech be, right? Okay, so here's what you say, Mohammed. You say, my name is Mohammed Fahim. I'm a workforce and you know, development professional. I am currently jobless, or I'm currently in transition is the new you know, term. Mm -hmm. I'm currently in transition. Uh, I'm looking for jobs. My target companies, I don't give a you-know-what <laughs> right. for what your target companies. I'm there in the chamber to interact with other members, learn a few new mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. That's not the place to ask. The place to ask 
is later on when you have a one-on-one -on -one informational interview and uh, we'll teach you not teach, teach is not the right word because I am constantly learning also folks but we'll share with you how you can go and make those meetings more effective for your job search. Mm -hmm. Come to a seminar, attend one of our boot camps that we have and we can uh, you know really really polish you up in those respects and the, the information is on our website again it is www.cfss.us so three informational interviews mm -hmm. okay five targeted resumes mm -hmm. four connecting events that you need to go out to three informational interviews mm -hmm. that leaves us with the two and the one and what's two what's two Two is uh, you, uh, you know, pull out your checkbook or get your, uh, you know, credit card and send me the information. <laughs> no, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, what is the purpose of all of these activities? To get a job. To get a job. And before you can get a job, what is the thing, the one step before? Need an interview. To get the interview, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have applied for five targeted positions that week. Mm -hmm. Take a step back and assume that you are going to get an interview call for at least two of those. And if you do things right, the way that we recommend in how to write a resume and master applicant tracking systems, I'll guarantee you, you will start getting interviews. Mm -hmm. So you need to practice for those potential interviews. Okay. So you need to practice at least for two interviews on a weekly basis. What are the kind of questions that are likely to be asked by those employers? How should I respond to those questions? What questions should I be asking when I get that interview? Mm -hmm. You kind of make that scenario so real in your mind that when it happens, it kind of, you come across as being natural. You're not looking like right. rehearsed. Uh, you know, look at a professional ball player. Do you think they just go out and play? What do you think they do before the yeah, season practice, starts? Practice, practice, they practice. They practice, practice, practice. Yeah. And before they go out to play against an opponent, they are watching the, you know, the, 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 the film of those opponents to see how they, they play, what their plays are. Right. They are trying to you know, come up with their own answer to those plays. Then after that is done, after the game is over, whether win or, law, you know, win or lose, they come back and they watch their performance again. Right. So it is a constant constant thing and the more you practice mentally the more prepared you would be for that interview so that is the number two part of the five four three two one process okay number one number one is of course the interview okay your target should be at least one phone or in-person interview or Skype interview one every week Okay. And if you do things correctly, if you do things sincerely, and again I ask you, you have heard that looking for a job is a full-time job. How do you define a full-time job? Okay, eight hours a day. Right. If you can do it, you know, four to six hours a day, the, the, way, the way that we are, uh, you know, we want you to do, mm -hmm. you will get that interview. Okay, and then from that point on, it is up to you how you make use of that opportunity to land the dream job for you. So that is the five, four, mm -hmm. three, two, one process. And again, my guarantee you to you folks, if you do that, and if you don't get a job in 90 days, you can hold me accountable. Well, I mean, thank you. That was great information. This is Ron Weber with Mohammed Fahim and Bob Johnson for CFSS TV.